So I'm going to spend a little time and uh, give my snowman some attention. I'm going to focus on the AI that will cause him to kind of move around randomly. And uh, I'm going to change the way that he throws snowballs just a little bit. So I did a little bit of work offline, um, just a little, uh, uh, little modification to the snowball. You can see I added a line render. Okay. And uh, so if you go to the snowball, there's a, a, a trail render, excuse me, trail render, not a line render. I added a trail render to the snowball, and that's just simply a component effects trail render. And once you add the trail render, you're going to need to create a material and drag in the material to uh, in this material field over here. So I just set up a trail render. I reduced the amount of time that it lives for, and I reduced the start and end width. Um, and otherwise, let everything default. And so now, when we throw the snowball, we get a little visual, a uh, little visual cue here. So um, that's what's happening there. So I'm a little confused because when I run around and try to throw snowballs, I'm focused on my cursor, and I keep thinking my cursor uh, is the reticle for um, throwing the snowballs. But you can see my aim is off. So I'm going to just jump in. Um, I've made a, I started making a heads-up display to something really simple inside Illustrator. I took some screenshots from Dribbble uh, of some color profiles that I liked. And so I'm using these colors uh, to set up the initial um, heads up display. So I'm focusing just on this little crosshair first, just so I can get something. Um, and I've already set that graphic up. So um, I've already got that set up as a PNG file. I've resized it to the, the size that I want. And I've also taken the opacity down on the layer so it's semi-transparent. So, um, and I'm gonna load that in inside Unity. And so what I'll do is I'll go to Game Objects UI and I'm gonna start with a UI image. Now, um, with image we get a canvas system and then we have an image and we just need to drag the image source in here. It's looking specifically for a sprite and I've already created a sprites folder I've created a HUD uh, subfolder and I dragged my PNG file into, uh, into my HUD folder. Uh, just a reminder that I did have to change the texture type to Sprite 2D UI. We've been through that process before and I hit apply. Uh, and at that point, I'm ready to bring that graphic in. So I'm gonna go find my PNG file. I'm gonna go back to my canvas image and I'll simply click, drag and drop that into my source image. Um, everything by default should should be ready to go. If I hit the play button, I'll test this really quickly. Um, and actually I can see that it's, it's down the bottom left hand corner. So let me fix that real quick. I'll go into my image and I'm just gonna go to this rec, rec transform component here. And I'm gonna hold down shift and alt, shift and alt, and I'll just center everything. And that zeroes out these values up here and I'll hit play and see if that gives me what I want. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. Um, so now I have a better sense of what I'm aiming at. Now, I'll change this. I'll probably make that little reticle or that little crosshair interactive. So maybe that when I'm on a target, it changes color. Uh, I have some big plans for my heads up display and my game design uh, in general. But for now, I just want to make a, a real simple pass uh, and spend some time organizing some things that I've neglected in the scene. Um, it's also worth mentioning that I did add a particle effect, so when the when the snowball hits an object, uh, or currently when it hits an untagged object, it does that little particle effect. Okay, and that's just on the snowball. So my snowball is still in the root of my scene, and I'm going to change that. And currently, everything the logic on the snowball is still running the same way. It's uh, listening for a system event of collision enter. If it hits something. Um, we're getting the collision info and currently the only thing that it's hitting right now are untagged objects. I don't have anything else in the scene tagged at this point. So the only function that's being run is it's passing it to this hit untagged after this uh, um, compare tag. Okay, there are no enemies so it's ignoring that one. Um, but my second game object compare tag is untagged and that logic is sending it over here to hit untagged. With the hit untagged, we're doing a send event to the object that it hit, and we're saying, I have been hit. I'm gonna change that a little bit later, but that's the basic logic we covered in the previous presentation. In addition to that, I'm just spawning a real simple um, particle effect, uh, and I'm spawning that particle effect at the location of the snowball. 
Um, I'm using the Flash 2 uh, particle effect, which is just um, the simple particle pack that Unity put out. So if you go to the asset store and look for particles uh, or just look under the Unity category, uh, you'll find their simple particle pack and there's tons of cool stuff in there. Um, so I just have that set aside. I've created that. I've modified it a little bit and I've started an effects folder and I have a, a prefab particle effect in there. So if I just drag this out, uh, I'll zoom in on this so you can see this a little bit more clearly. When I hit the simulate button, just a little, little particle effect. Okay, so that's happening every time the snowball hits something. Um, so those are really the only changes that I've made. Just some, some simple uh, visual changes. I now have a heads up display, uh, or the start of one anyway. I'm gonna add some more information to it as needed. Um, so that's what I have so far. But right now I wanna spend a little bit of time on my snowman. I've kind of neglected my snowman. And I did remove one thing from the previous presentation. So I'm gonna go find my snowman with projectile. And the only change that I've made uh, is that on the enemy snowball spawn, previously we had an action uh, that was causing uh, the, the, the the snowball spawn to look at the player position. Okay, so on the idle state we had a smooth look at. I've since removed that action because what I wanna do is I wanna let that run on the snowman projectile itself. So I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup here and I'm gonna rename just a few things. So I, I wanna point out that I made available inside the lesson folder. I've made available the snowman FBX file that I'm using. Uh, this is something that I modeled in Cinema 4D and I provided a link to um, just a refresher of the modeling process in Cinema 4D of the snowman, at least at least uh, the first presentation. It's a 13 part presentation. You can review that if you need to. I'm gonna jump back into Unity and focus on cleaning up my snowman. There's a couple things here. I don't need this Cinema 4D editor. This is just something that came in uh, with the FBX file. I'm gonna command delete and get rid of that. It's gonna break the prefab instance, which is fine. I'll, I'll delete that. So now I have this thing called snowman with projectile and inside snowman with projectile, I have a snowman. And inside snowman, I have all of the different components that are making up the snowman, okay? And I'm gonna spend some more time inside uh, this informational, um, inside the snowman a little bit later, but I am just gonna name the snowman I'm gonna call this snowman rig. So this is an empty game object that contains all of the stuff, uh, you know, all the different parts and pieces, okay? And then I have my snowman empty game object. And on my snowman empty game object, I have this uh, box collider, okay? So I have my snowman with projectile. So I'm simply gonna get rid of with projectile. It's gonna be implied from now on. Um, but my snowman, I'm gonna have different, several different snowmen um, of increasing strength. And I haven't decided what I'm gonna call these snowmen yet, but I'm gonna start off by, this is my snowman grunt. It's kind of the first level snowman and I'll come up with a better name when I enter my design document, which we'll do uh, shortly. And I'll really think about the character design of my, of my uh, characters in game and I'll think about some of the, the nuances of the gameplay. But I'll visit that later. I'm still gonna focus on mechanics. So I have my snowman grunt object, I have my snowman rig inside that. So I'm gonna take the snowman grunt object and I'm gonna add a state machine to it. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna build a real simple AI system that causes the snowman to look at the player. That's the first thing I wanna do. So I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna search for look and there's a smooth look at and I'll just add the smooth look at. So I wanna use the owner object and the target is gonna be the player. So I've renamed my first person controller. I've named that player more appropriately. So we're constantly gonna be looking at the player at this point. Okay, and I'm gonna keep it vertical and the speed is fine. I'm not gonna do a, a finished distance, uh, at least for now, maybe later I'll go back. And so now, as I move around, you can see that that snowman tracks the direction that I'm pointing in. So he's currently throwing snowballs um, so that mechanic is still in place. We're still heaving snowballs, uh, and but now he's just looking in my direction. Okay, so one other thing that I wanna do is I wanna get the snowman to randomly run around. Okay, so I'm gonna create some waypoints inside the environment. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this a little bit different than I had in the past. And, and so I've created a waypoint tag. So I went into add tag, I hit the plus button, I got a new field, and I call that waypoint, okay? 
and I'm just going to tinker around with a with a new example here. So I'm going to go into my select my snowman grunt object. Um, this is my look at state, and what I want to do is I kind of want to pepper the environment with waypoints. Uh, these are going to be random waypoints, and I'm going to use actually a 3D object so I can visualize this a little bit more clearly. So I'm going to take a sphere. And this sphere, I'll just move it off to the side. Um, I want it a little bit smaller, and I also want to add a material to it so it really pops out from the landscape. So this sphere, I'm gonna make it much smaller, so like 0.5 in all three axes. I have a material folder in here, and I'm just gonna borrow one of the existing materials that I already have. I think red will do a good job. So I'll throw red onto this sphere, and I'll zoom in. Now, I'm gonna turn the, the collider off because I don't need to bother with the collider. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna snap this, um, this sphere to the surface of the terrain. And I'm gonna use this as the position that the snowman is gonna to move towards, okay? And the way I'll do this is I'll hold Shift Command. And if I grab this by the middle, you can see that it starts to snap to a surface. So if I move this around and kind of show you the different surfaces it's snapping to, uh, you can see it'll snap to a polygon. Okay, well we can do that with the train. You can see that it's kind of stuck halfway down into the ground. Okay, so that's my first waypoint. I'll just kind of randomly place it here. I'm actually gonna call this object maybe WPT or waypoint or whatever I wanna call it, but more importantly, I'm gonna tag it with waypoint because I'm gonna use an action in here. Um, there's a random, if I spell that right, random, um, I can get random game objects. So we can we can get a random game object uh, with tag, okay? So every time we come and uh, uh, encounter this action, um, we have two options. We can get random game object, which uh, we're gonna use, and we're just gonna use this tag feature with tag, and we'll look for random waypoints. Or we could do uh, select a random object. And the difference between the two is the select a random object, if you look down here in the preview, you have to manually load in the objects. And what I'm preferring to do is use this get random object, and then we can get random with tag, and that looks for your entire scene, filtering based on tags. Um, and so we'll use that to randomize the waypoints of this snowman. So uh, I'll grab this waypoint, make sure it's tagged with waypoint, and I'll just kind of back out a little bit and I'll do this real quick. I'm gonna Command D and I'm gonna Command Shift and drag and that'll just ensure that it's snapping to, to the surface. So I'll Command D, duplicate it again. And I'll just do this with like five different waypoints. Command D, Command Shift, drag. And so they're really stuck on the ground. And the reason I'm doing the Command Shift trick is because I want the snowman to really adhere to the topology, topology of the terrain. So if I hold down Shift Command, you can see I got a rise in my terrain back here. And if I drag that, you can see if I Command Shift drag it, it'll just ensure that it's kind of sticking to the surface. So I don't have to worry about um, the vertical height of these if I do it this way. So I, I have five different waypoints. I'll, I'll select them and, and just kind of tweak them as needed. But if I hold down Command Shift, when I drag around, it'll ensure that I'm kind of stuck on the ground. So I have these five random waypoints. I'll go back to my snowman grunt. I may wanna actually um, have the snowman rig do the running around, but we'll talk about templates, um, state machine templates here a little bit later. So I just wanna work through the logic. So I'm currently looking at, when I'm inside this state, we're looking at the, um, we're looking at the player, okay? When I'm in this state, I also wanna do a get random object. And the get random object I'm gonna search for objects that are tagged with waypoint because remember, I made the first waypoint and I tagged it with waypoint, so when I duplicated it, it inherited that property. Just go back to my snowman. And so we're randomly getting objects with the waypoint tag and now I wanna store this in a game object variable. So I'll go into variables and I'm gonna create a game object and I'll, I'll um, just call this uh, simply waypoint. You know, I could give it another name like waypoint to go to, but I'll have a good idea of what this is doing. So I'll call that waypoint and I'll go back to my, uh, my action and I'll get random waypoint and store that result. So now uh, when I hit the play button, each time this state fires, it should have a different waypoint here in this, uh, in this field. 
Okay, now it's only gonna do that one time. We don't want this to run every frame, uh, but I can see that it chose waypoint one the first time. So I'll hit play again and just make sure that it did, in fact, choose a different one. So this time it chose four, so that's good. So the next thing that I need to do is I wanna add a state and I'm, I'm gonna use the, uh, I'll use the move towards command. So under transform, we have a move towards and I'm gonna do this in a different state and I'll move towards, we want the owner of this game object, which is our snowman grunt, to move towards a target object. Well, our target object is gonna be the result of this random waypoint. So we wanna use this Gape, uh, this uh, game object variable here. So I'm gonna go into state one, and rather than hardwiring a specific object, I'm gonna hit this toggle button here, and I'll choose waypoint. So whatever the result of, of this get random waypoint, when we move over to state two, it's gonna use that uh, as its location, okay? So we have a finish distance here, we have a, a max speed. I'm gonna take the speed down to something like maybe five for now. My finished instance, I wanna be really close to, the, to this point, so I'm gonna take it down to about half a meter. Um, and then this finish event, well, I'm gonna go create two events. And I just want two generic events. I'm gonna call this next and reset. Okay, and so my look at state, uh, once I finish looking at my object, I could use this finish event and tell it to go to next. So let me try that. I might have to change this, but we'll say next and pass that over. And again, next is just a real generic name. You could call it whatever you want. We'll say next. So once we arrive at looking at our target, it's gonna pass it and get the next waypoint. Okay, so we'll move to next. And here on our finished event, once we get within half of a meter of our destination, we'll, we'll use this reset to send it back to the beginning. So the logic here is that we look at the player and we also get a, a random game object. Once we look at the player, we'll fire off the next event, and the next event tells us to move towards whatever the random uh, waypoint is. So let's see if that worked. I'll hit the play button, so I can see it moving to the first waypoint. Okay, now it's moving to another waypoint. It'll turn and look at me and start throwing snowballs. Okay, so you can see that the glitch here now is that um, it only it only turns to look at you um, when it arrives. So I'm going to tweak that a little bit. But for now, we have this snowman that's randomly running around, uh, heaving snowballs at us. Okay, so it might make sense to have the um, snow the 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 snowball launching. Uh, mechanic inside the snowman grunt at the same level, but these are the kinds of things that through the design document we're going to work out the details. Okay, uh, we're just kind of coming up with the core mechanics to figure out the, the basic gameplay. And at this point, we have some basic AI that we can work with, right? So I have this, this snowman that's running around, I have my basic heads up display, I can kind of return uh, the snowballs and kind of fling these back at the snowman. And if I could get my aim down here, um, I can actually hit them. So I need to start working on the, 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 the next couple of concepts, which are, I definitely want to get some kind of health system in place for this snowman so I can start to do some damage. Um, I want to start to think of the different capabilities of different snowmen. And I think I'm going to indicate, uh, indicate those by having different color hats, or maybe I'll have different size snowman or different color. I'm going to figure that out in my design document. Um, but the next step in this project, we wanna go revisit our design document and come up with concepts. We wanna think through our weapon system, okay? So we want a couple of different snowballs or we wanna think about how our snowballs might work. I'm thinking I probably want a variable uh, power system to where the longer I hold down the mouse button, the more power I gather to throw the snowball. So I can't rapid fire the snowball and have it go a great distance. I have to click and hold to wait to build up the power to launch it. Um, so I want to think about the core mechanics of my um, uh, think about the core mechanics of my combat, uh, and then go through and start kind of you know thinking through the bugs and, and and introduce the the basic mechanics. Like right now, I see my snowman is floating across the ground, and that's because. Um, that's because it, it, it found that higher uh, um, waypoint. So those are just little things that I'll have to, you know, kind of tweak. 
But we want to think about, we want to go back to the design document. We want to think about the weapons. We want to think about the enemies. We want to think about the first level. Do you want to get introduced to this game and start having snowman, snowmen start heaving snowballs at you? Or do you want to discover a snowball and figure out how it works before you end up in a combat situation? These are the kinds of things that I want you to think about. Um, I'll post some requirements for the next step of the design document. You can find that inside the Blackboard um, lesson folder. But in the meantime, start experimenting with the core mechanics, integrate a health system at this point, um, integrate an ammo system, and start thinking about the basic nuance of your game. How is your game going to be different from what you're seeing in this demonstration? And we'll catch up later on in the, the next presentation.